Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Sandworms of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is part of the continuation to the original June series. It's basically book number eight. So you have Chapter House June, then you have Hunters of June, which these two wrote after Frank Herbert's death, and then this one. Um, I mean, it's actually, I think, the eighth book I've read by these as well, because they also did two trilogies. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to check out some of my tabs and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say... Um, just because of the nature of this book and how long it is. I do these like more like reading vlogs really. So I'm on page, what, 156 of about 620 at the moment. 612. Um, so make of that as you will. So, Dane reads. When Frank Herbert died in 1986, the epic he began with June and continued to Chapter House June remained unfinished. Now the saga's grand finale has been completed as he intended. The foe that humanity believed to be long defeated has reappeared from the edge of the universe, and mankind's last defenders fear that nothing can stop it now. Slaughtering whole planets with biological plagues, the terrible enemy accidentally reawakened by the honoured majors approaches ever closer to Chapter House, where Mother Commander Mobella and her combined force of Bene Gesserit and honoured majors desperately gather their every defence to stop its advance. Meanwhile, Shiana's nose ship flees from both Mobella and the enemy, carrying the last of surviving sandworms from Arrakis and the reborn heroes of past ages, including Paul Atreides himself. One of them is the ultimate Kwisatch Haderach, the messiah who will change the world in ways that no one can predict. But far away on a horribly altered Caladan, the enemy seeks to create a Kwisatch Haderach of its own. There's a quote here from the Bene Gesserit Acolytes Handbook that I wanted to share because this is very much what people are like. Two people drift in a lifeboat on an uncharted sea. One says, there, I see an island. Our best chance is to go ashore, build a shelter and await rescue. The other says, no, we must go farther out to sea and hope to find the shipping lanes. That is our best chance. Unable to agree, the two fight, the lifeboat capsizes and they drown. This is the nature of humanity. Even if only two people are left in the entire universe, they will come to represent opposing factions. And then here a quote from Missionaria Protector of the First Primer. Why is religion important? Because logic alone does not compel a person to make great sacrifices. Given sufficient religious fervour, however, people will throw themselves against impossible odds and consider themselves blessed for doing so. And I love this. This is from a Bene Gesserit study on the human condition. The fate of our race depends on the actions of an unlikely collection of misfits. Yes, yes, I feel like that's true all the time. And Shiana has a great quote during the narrative here. She says, throughout history, men and women have had a monopoly on their own kinds of pain, each thinking theirs is the worst. So we've got a quote here at the start of a chapter, which I thought was a good one. Duncan Idaho from the No Ship Logs. No matter where I go, no matter what I leave behind, my past is always with me like a shadow. Good little quote, very true. Uh, and then we get this really harsh bit with uh, Wei. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his name. So they've all been brought back as Golas, and this is the guy who betrayed uh, Duke Leto Atreides in the original series. And he's trying to make amends, so he decides to kill the Gola that's growing of uh, Peter de Vries, who is uh, one of the Harkonnens dudes. And it turns out it wasn't Duke Peter, uh, it wasn't Peter, it was Duke Atreides being reborn as a Gola. So he's accidentally killed Duke Atreides for a second time. Um, and obviously, I, as I'm still reading this, we yet to see the ramifications of that, but he's going to go mad because this is one of the interesting things because he knows he's a Gola and he's eventually going to regain his memories, but he doesn't want to regain his memories because he doesn't want to be the person he was. He wants to be a different person. And so this was his attempt at making up for that and it backfired. I'm very tired today. I don't know if you can tell. I can barely keep my eyes open. So here we have a quote from Bashar Miles Teg, resource allocation request to the Bene Gesserit. When the forces are arrayed and the final battle is engaged, the outcome may be decided in only a few moments. Remember this, by the time the first shot is fired, half the battle is already over. Victory or defeat can be determined by the preparations that are set in place weeks or even months beforehand. And we get this great little uh, two-liner here, so, Garimi's eyes flashed. You are playing with fire, Shiana. I am forging weapons. For that, fire is necessary. And this is a great quote as well from the Bene Gesserit Acolytes Handbook. A test must be defined before it can be useful. What are the parameters? What is the accuracy? Too often a test does nothing more than analyze the tester herself. And that's true of digital marketing as well. So there's a quote here from Mother Commander Mobert from uh, Dressed to the New Sisterhood. She said, our shared humanity should by definition make us allies. 
In sad fact, however, our very similarities often appear to be vast differences and insurmountable obstacles. And then here we have from Duke Leto Atreides, last message from Caladan. Time is a commodity more precious than melange. Even the wealthiest man cannot buy more minutes to put into each hour, which is very true. And Erasmus the robot, he says, so many of the most interesting humans are women. And this towards the end, we get a whole bunch of revelations, including who the ultimate Kwisatz Haderach is. And um, the kind of the end of the reign of the robots. There's some good twists there. And Erasmus gets this very tasteless line here. Bearing in mind, he's the robot who killed Serena Butler's baby and started the Butlerian Jihad. He says, no need to throw the baby out with the bathwater to use one of your ancient cliches. I threw a baby off a balcony once. The consequences were extreme. And a quote here, Duncan Idaho from A Thousand Lives. Life is about determining what to do next from moment to moment. I've never been afraid of making decisions. And finally, I want to share this one as well from Lady Jessica Lament for Alia, um, cause she's, oh, phone's ringing. So Lady Jessica has lost um, Alia twice. She says, how terrible for a mother to bury her own daughter. There is no greater pain, not even the Bene Gesserit agony. Now I've had to bury my daughter twice. That is rough. So yeah, Sam Words of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I thought it was a really good end to the June series. It was great to finally have books seven and eight and to kind of see the continuation of the June saga. Um, definitely worth waiting for and worth reading. So if, even if you don't read any of the other books by these two, if you read the first six June books and feel sort of cheated by Frank Herbert dying after Chapter House June, definitely read books seven and eight. I gave this one a four out of five. would recommend. Check it out. Only five more June books left to go now, so I'm looking forward to getting to those too. So there we have it, that's what I made of Sandworms of June. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.